Okay. Take it easy. Hi. Yeah, I can. Hi, guys. Can you see me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, please, English. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh Sally Soft. Don't shy, I don't bite. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, pair. Well, pair is a very old system. I think it's it's still in use. I agree, it's still in use. Um, pair. The problem with pair is that when you use pair, it becomes a system wide package. Is used when you we include when you create a pair uh, package is is included in uh, across the whole system. So if you're running maybe certain software which only requires certain parts, you don't need all that. Um, um yeah so I, I, I personally like to keep it to keep things contained inside the application folder I'm working in. So if I can see the, the as you can see uh, composer creates a, a composer creates uh, the vendor folder and, and and also creates an auto auto loading uh, you also use his own auto loading library. So you can use the namespaces to basically include the libraries that you need. Pair doesn't really have doesn't have a, have a proper auto loading mechanism so you're with each library that you're using with pair you need to find out how to actually include those files and how to actually use it and it's all very inconsistent I think pair came out at a time where that, that no, no one ever thought about being finding a way to, to, to be consistent about things so um, it's still useful uh, there's still like like, PH, like PHP unit for the longest time it's still can you only install it using pair um, I think it's still a place uh, this, you can you can still use pair if you need to, um, but I think moving forward uh, you should try and use Composer. Uh, one thing I like about Composer is um, the the code the code itself is isolated to inside the vendors folder. With pair, you you it gives you it has it, the the path in which it uses is different for each operating system. So yeah, you kind of like you're you're left guessing where is the file, right? So you do like uh, I can't remember I can't give specifics, but when you use, for example, uh, PHP unit, PHP unit has uh, sub libraries for DB uh, like DB unit uh, and Selenium and all that stuff. It's all nested in different subfolders, and you you sometimes I really don't know what's going on. I need to go into the the core system, go to the folder. I can't remember where it is now, it's under US, USR, share, and whatever other place. And the problem is when you make change there, 
chances are you would also affect other applications that are running on the same server. Because pair libraries are shared across all the shared all the all the applications running on your machine. Um, with Composer, is, I feel it's more cleaner. It's a cleaner separation. Yeah. Does that answer your question? I mean, pair. I, I, I'm nothing. I'm nothing against pair. I think pair is awesome. Uh, but just that in some particular cases, you really like to have some. Uh, uh it to be properly isolated and separated from the system. Um, from the rest of the applications running on the same server, yeah. Um, maybe I could also ad address some questions that were that came in through the Google Hangout. Uh, is Wiki Chua there? Is there a Wiki Chua uh, in in the seated there? No. Okay, never mind. Uh, so this guy Wiki Chua who came on the Google Hangout asked ask me about is design patterns relevant to agile development. Um, I think it's a very good question because design patterns are important and knowing the design patterns, I think design patterns help you communicate. I think as uh, to your co-workers about what, how to develop an application, how to develop a certain part of the application. So knowing design patterns is actually very critical uh, to communicating well in an agile uh, development. So when you talk about a factory pattern or a active record pattern, you immediately understand what it means, and you know understand how to go about how to go about building putting putting together the building blocks for a for that particular design pattern. So I think that's important. Um, what else is there? He also asked a certain question about. He asked my opinion about another uh, website called Coding K O D I N G dot com, which is very similar to Nitrous .io. Um, I personally feel I've tried both coding as well as Nitrous IO before. Uh, I feel Nitrous IO has has uh, is cleaner in the setup. As in, you when you run PHP, it already has Composer installed. It has a quite a few libraries already installed. Whereas with coding, uh, you need to go in and do a bit more work to get your PHP development environment set up properly. Uh, which is but both has its benefits for helping you. Uh, collaborate with with other developers on the same source code, uh, so uh, coding and Nitrous IO are both I think equally on par in terms of collaborating on code. Uh, one thing to note, of course, when using Nitrous IO or Coding dot com, uh, is that your code is sitting on on a third party server. So basically, you're working both of you are working on code which is not on your desktop. It's actually running off another uh, uh, web hosting service. Uh, and your code is there in the development environment, um, which there could be some security risk there, as in you you could uh, actually be putting a file on some other people's machine. <laughs> so it might be a question mark about how how secure that is and how how your how comfortable your client is about you putting code on those machines. Um, let's see what else what other questions is there. Uh, Right, he he also asked a question about PHP FIG. Uh, PHP FIG, the framework interop group, recommended a number of uh, coding standards, uh, even coding style, how you should write code and uh, yeah, two spaces and all that stuff. Um, he's asking um, whether it's ideal for a company to invent your own coding standard. So the coding standard recommended by uh, FIG, I think it should be PSR1 or PSR2. Let me try and recall. Um, the framework interrupt group coding standard, coding style. PSR1 and PSR2 are coding standards uh, written by the FIG. Um, I think it's okay 
for your own company to have your own coding standards because I think each company has, 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 can differentiate themselves um, as long as it's consistent, as long as everyone in your company understands the coding standard and adhere to it, I think it's fine. Um, but of course, if you have if you're, you're using a um, recommended coding standard used globally by other people in the industry, it will be a lot easier for them to come on board and to cut code, start coding in your project. Um, so I think trying to ad, uh, adopt industry standards are good because it helps us uh, help developers understand how to do things properly. Um, if your company wants to develop your own standards, it's fine. In my previous company, in Mix 3 we actually have our own coding standard as well. Like instead of uh, two spaces, we use the tab character. So it's it's you it depends on the company lah. Um, uh, he also asked me about my opinion about. Uh, NetBeans and uh, PHP Storm, but I prefer PHP Storm. Uh. <laughs> um, there was another question asked by Wyman: How will PHP stay relevant when we have had when we have so many new uh, web languages and platforms such as Node.js, which are easier to set up and code? Um, I think that in our ecosystem, we there is definitely room to improve, and there are way uh, we can, there are a lot of things we can learn from other languages. Uh, there are a lot of things we can learn from Node from Node JS. There are a lot of things we can learn from from Ruby, uh, how to do things. Like for example, Cake PHP draws a lot of its inspiration and philosophy from Ruby on Rails. Um, but Ruby itself is not that easy to learn because there are some magic that happens behind the scene that takes a bit of learning. There's a learning curve learning other languages. I would, I would say they are not actually easier. Um, Node.js may look easier to use because it's JavaScript, um, but Node.js is horrendous when you, to set up when you come to production. When you, you need to, there's a lot of things which are not, not conventional. Like in the PHP world, we, have, we know when you go to production servers, we have Apache, we have MySQL, we have, we have tools that are already available that can get us up, up and running very quickly. Um, but not so much in Node.js. Um, I think PHP is still relevant as long as we keep innovating and, and keeping up with standards and trying ways to move away from the painful things from doing PHP. Like um, there are a lot of things that PHP is painful for, but I can't think of any right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, actually, that's all the questions on on the Google on Google Hangout. Are there any other questions from you guys? Hi. Yes, I have. I have deployed a, win a sample code on Windows Azure. I've also been able to use Windows Azure. Um, actually, in fact, our PHP Singapore PHP user group website supposedly runs on a Windows Azure server. Um, okay, there, 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 there are a couple of aspects to Windows Azure. I think uh, there, you can set up a Windows Azure server like the, the, like running Ubuntu or CentOS and that basically, basically it has no difference between um, Windows Azure for that and uh, EC2 on Amazon. Uh, what what I really like about Windows Azure is that you can actually just deploy your code, like how you do on Heroku. So you just uh, deploy your code on on a, an instance uh, in Azure and it let it run. Um, I can't remember the terminology, but uh, what is it exactly you you like to know about Windows Azure? I uh, I'm not sure. Um, I think Windows Azure is cool. I think it's a good it's a good development. I think and I think I think Microsoft has always been supportive of the open source community. Um, I think there's some good good developments there. I think we should try it out, but be careful because there's a cost involved in using Azure. Uh, so be careful how many how many how many CPUs you spin up and stuff like that. So, of course, if you're on the what's that program? Um, 
this Microsoft Bispark program, you can get you can get Azure instances and time for free. If you're on the Bispark program, I think you get a full year worth of of uh, of time on Windows Azure, and you can try it out for free, which is kind of cool. So I think it, there's no harm in that, la. Thank you. So uh, yeah, you, you guys can contact me anytime if you have any questions. Um, I think on my slides you see the my contact my 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 Twitter account and my homepage. You can just drop me a mail or something. Yeah. Yeah, the slides are already available online. Uh, I think I just added one more slide, but uh, that's, that's a very small thing. Uh, I'll just I'll update the slides, uh, and the video I think should still be available on Google Hangout, so you can still see my, my presentation on Google Hangout. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a meetup. So yeah, actually, there's also one more thing I'd like to share. Um, I hope you guys can give me some time. Uh, I'll just talk very briefly about this. Uh, uh, how many of you guys use uh, uh, WordPress? Okay. Yeah. Great. A lot of hands. Okay, so I'm share. Can you see me sharing my desktop now? Okay, and uh, let me see. You can get to this. Ah, uh, okay. Can you see my desktop? Okay, so I've switched over to. Uh, can you see this? Can you see this? Oh, you didn't see my Skype. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh dear. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's kind of weird. What's going on? Ah. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me just turn off my. Okay, can you just just my just my Skype now, right? Okay. Let me just bring the browser screen over. Right. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, there's. The founder, the creator of WordPress is actually coming to Singapore. So he's, he'll be here on the 4th of June. Uh, so it's, it's free to attend. We have a, it, you can go to the website. Uh, you, can, you can go to, you can basically, okay, the URL is j.mp slash meetmatsg. Um, right, so basically you can sign up for, for sign up and you can come and meet him in person. <laughs> So the creator of WordPress, yeah, the, web, uh, the creator of web, or WordPress will be in Singapore on, in in June. So June of fourth, fourth of June, sorry, fourth of June this year. So uh, we are hosting him in Singapore. He's making a trip around the region. I'm not sure whether he's actually going to the Philippines, but uh, he's definitely coming to Singapore on the fourth of June. So. Uh, I can I can I can ask, but uh, if you if you like, your guys can come to Singapore and see him. 
yeah yeah so it's free of charge so uh yeah just just have to pay for your air ticket and stuff so yeah unfortunately but uh yeah you get to see him in person he's quite a legend i heard so yeah sure i will i will uh let me just bring up my skype now where's my skype where is my skype yeah uh, and actually that's with that I, I think that's all I have Uh, I hope so. Oh. Wow. Uh, we can try. We can try. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah, we do. Um, actually, yeah, we just finished our last meetup, so I have not plan made plans on the next one yet. So we'll see how. Probably have one in May. I think l late May. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see. All right. We'll do. And we'll go to other places, other communities. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.